Next is D2. D2 is once again a modified block. So we're gonna go look at the booklet that came with the kit. And this is what we see. It's essentially the same block. There's just a couple of differences. Like there's the triangles here and the corners aren't there. And the assembly is a little different. So this is what we're working with. And you'll see a note on the bottom here. Octagons are appliqued to the center and then they reduce the shapes, the corner shapes to trapezoids, which was this versus all of that. So here's my pieces. This is my main block right here, okay? You got this square that's surrounded by the trapezoids and then the corners are focus fabric colored right here. But then you have the octagons. Now the octagons, if you'll notice, there is two different size sides. This is a shorter side and this is a longer side and it's real easy to turn them and not be able to quite catch it. So if you're trying to fit it to the picture make sure that you've got the short sides up and down left and right not the long sides because it gives it a whole different effect and a whole different look. So we're going to make sure the little short sides are on the top and left and right. What we're going to do is base the center square, okay? That's going to give us this black square. Just imagine that this is just a piece because it is, okay? And then we are going to connect the four octagons on their own. We're going to connect them in a square, okay? So I'm going to sew these together, not on top of anything. Just I'm going to base these and sew them together in a group of four. Then I'm going to take that group of four and place it on top of the square that we basted. And then we'll applique that down. And then I'm going to be able to, once I get that applique down, and I want to make sure that I do this before I make the block. Because that way it's going to be a lot easier to maintain a handle on it and all that kind of thing. The bigger it gets, the harder it is to accurately applique. So this will give you more control if you take the, the four, connect them, and then applique on here, and then do the rest of the block. So we'll do that, and I'll add these pieces as we go. So let's baste. I'm going to baste my square, and I'm going to baste my octagons, and then we can get to assembling the octagons. And if you've noticed, there are no pieces in here for this square or these tiny triangles. They are not in your kit. And that's because this effect is just where it's not applique. So you're gonna get this effect, but it's gonna be from the square showing through the octagons. So I've basted my square, I'm setting that aside, but I wanted to talk about my basting on the octagons. Some people will pick a side and then just kind of wrap it around and there's nothing wrong with that. What I've found though, if you take one side, like either the short or the long side, I'm doing the short first because I just am. I think it gives it a crisper corner, but I don't know if that's true or not. But so I'm gonna go ahead and I went around and did all of the short sides. So every other side, and then I got this here and then I'll fold these in, which are on the long side. And this is what it looks like on the back, but this is, it's gonna look nice and crisp on the front here. So I'm gonna be able to put these in place and stitch them together. But I thought I would just give you a quick note on how I decided to do that. Oh, this, see, this is so easy to turn. This is, oh yeah, no, the first fold is the short side. <laughs> I'm constantly questioning myself. So yeah, that and that. So, I went to attach these at the short sides because I wasn't paying attention and that's not where they're connected. This is the short side here, but it's connected on the long side. So, clearly, this isn't gonna work because it's too big. Now, I've only sewed them into pairs and I taped the, the double, but yeah, this isn't. <laughs> so don't do what I did. So I'm gonna take this apart and connect them on the long sides 
All right, so I've got these corrected and fixed into the correct shape. Next thing to do would be to attach this to the square so that we can applique it. What I'm gonna do is I use a stapler to staple these together. Some people don't like doing that, but um, I find it easier because then you have, it's paper already covered with fabric, and then I just, you know, carefully remove it. But what I'm gonna do on each corner here, I'm gonna bring this edge to where it cuts off and touches each side like that. And then I'm gonna staple it right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And you might get a little bit of raising up in the middle, but that's okay, because you want this to be lined up evenly. You don't want it to be like that. You want it to be the right way. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around and do this and get this stapled onto the square. So I've stapled this down and you can see that it's it's got a little bit of dimension in it. It's popping up a little bit and that's completely fine. You wanna make sure that when you stitch this down, you keep these lined up. Like right now, you can kind of see some of the edges. I'm just gonna make sure that this lines up on the edge of the square when I applique this down. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this applique down so that I can get the staples back out. So I've got the outside of this applique on and I wanted to point out, this is quite dimensional. And the trick to this, it doesn't matter if it's not flat right now. The trick, that the, the thing that does matter is that these edges need to be as close together and accurate as possible. Because once you take the papers out, it's where the fabric is sewn down that really matters. So I've got the stitches all around each edge on the very outer edge. But the other thing is you wanna make sure that you remember to go back and do the center section, which I have not done. But I did the outside first, and because of the dimensionality, I wanted to do that before I did the center section so I know where it landed properly and, and was the flattest. So I'm gonna go finish this, and then I can take my staples out. The other thing I wanted to point out was when I go to get this started, I always, I'm gonna make sure that I get this bar, far back in there so that my knot gets buried. And this is what I did on the outside as well. But when I go to put my stitch in the front, if it'll come out, see, and then I lose the back here. So when I go to do this, I'm hoping this shows, my needle, needs to be on the fold or slightly under. The more that it's on top of the fold, like if you whip stitch it, when you take the papers out, you're gonna see more of the stitch. So if you have it on the fold directly, it's gonna be less noticeable and it's gonna hide more. And so see that my net, my, my, I'm gonna make sure I tuck my knot in there. And then as I go around, I'm right-handed and the most comfortable way for me to do this would be to take a little bit underneath here and then go next to where I was so that when the stitch is there, you're bringing the needle straight below that folded, folded the area you came out on the fold. And this is why basting is so important. You don't want to glue right at the edge of the paper. I always try to leave a little bit of a space between the paper and the seam right here. So I try to do the edge of the fabric when I, when I do my glue, and that leaves hopefully a little section here, but it pulls it tight enough where you can have a crisp edge. So as I go around here, and I'm bending this, I'm doing whatever, it's, it's paper, it's going to bend and twist and that's fine because at the end of the day the paper's not going to be in the quilt so you want to just work your way around and make sure that uh and when i did these i actually like bent this back to get all up in there so don't be shy about getting your needle where you need it so i finished this middle section and i took out my staples and uh, like I said, this is gonna lay a lot flatter once we get the papers out. And for those of you 
who don't get how you get these papers out when there's this paper here. Once you get all this surrounded, you take this paper out and then you can trim, pretend this is the back, you trim on the back a seam allowance underneath the, each one of these and then you can pop out these pieces of fabric. I have a video specifically about removing papers that talks about how to do that. But in the meantime, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna make, now we gotta surround it with this other stuff. So let me flip it over. Now, if you look at this, so we got this section done, but I wanna call your attention to these little lines on each side of this square. Those little lines are gonna complicate matters a little bit. So that's this edge and this edge. I'm going to baste these edges first so that I can have a chance to find the corners better. So then I'll baste these and then I'll do the outside. I'll do these and then I'll do this one last because then that brings it in. Um, but the trick is getting this started correctly because you want to put that corner right on the edge of the square so that it sits right. So I'm gonna do these one at a time in a, in a circular. I usually do opposing and then the other side. In this situation, I'm gonna do one at a time in one direction or the other. But the basing is gonna be the trick because whenever you base an open angle like this, it's more difficult to get that fabric point at the paper point so you want to give yourself a fighting chance and the other thing i can do is baste the triangles and i'm going to baste these with the hypotenuse last so i'm going to do the legs first then the hypotenuse so that they go away from the trapezoids i think though i'm going to connect these before i put them on the corners because that's going to be a lot easier to put these onto a smaller unit than the end square, but that's personal choice. So let me get all these basted and stuff. So the first thing I did is I attached my triangles to each corner here. Um, I basted these. These look a little weird the way that they're basted, but that's these corners are just the, ba the seam allowance from this side, and you just lift it before you stitch it so that you can get the paper out. So I've attached this first corner already, and you'll see here that I have from here to here is attached, and then there's these little edges. The next thing I'm going to do is work my ray around with the next piece so that I can uh, get this lined up correctly, so that it can be a nice straight edge and still hit the corner for the next piece on the right section. So let me get the next one attached. So I've got the third corner attached. And so now I've just got to slot this fourth one into place. So I've got the fourth corner attached and now my D2 block has been completed.